All right, guys, so we're going to be checking out the Confinement Special, Only Us, and this takes place in between Episode 2 and 3. Now, Connor holds a special place in my heart now because he's so SCP, even his redactions have redactions. Um, I ultimately don't know what else to say about him other than I feel you, bro. I feel you. Um, we have seen him get sliced, diced, and cut into ribbons on numerous occasions. It is the nature of the beast. It is what it is. Here we go. Only us. Walk in, ask questions, ask him out. Walk in, ask questions, ask him out. Ask him out. Mm. Get it together, Natalie. Stay impartial. Impartial? You don't know what terrible things could be hiding behind those big, gorgeous eyes. What if he's a murderer, or a cultist, or one of the self-proclaimed war veterans from that non-existent country? What? Sorry I'm late. My workload <laughs> is crazy right now. But you were just whispering through that door, talking about how gorgeous my eyes were, like three seconds ago. <laughs> Reschedule. Oh. One week later. <laughs> Guess they all got away. Can't catch all of them. So, Connor, let's talk about the root of your confidence issues. Who were the most influential people in your childhood? Tell me about the people or things you met during your very unique, confined upbringing. Mm. Patient confidentiality, it's only us. Creepy. As a kid, I was transferred a lot. One time, I met a guy who involuntarily jumped between alternate dimensions. Oh, I remember He seemed nice, guy. but conversations with him were a pain. Yeah, I figured. Then there was that day I got to meet myself when I was that toaster that can only be talked about in the first person. What? I was a real mind fuck. When I finally met a kid my own age, he was cool, I guess. He told me that he could force any adult to take care of him, groom him, and then feed him until they died of starvation. Lucky. There was this ghost that possessed one of my corpses once. We hung out for a while until he got bored of me and possessed some cooler kid. Nice. Let's see, there was an author from Site 51 that kept bugging me about his bad novels. <laughs> and there's that one guy I'm not supposed to talk about. And a few more, but I can't really remember them at the moment. Uh huh. And I don't even know, e like, I, I know none of these. None of these. Actually, you know what? I did have a real friend for a while. His name was Gilbert. Okay. I was probably 11 years old at the time. Site 6-3 had a huge child care center that I got to stay in for a while. Okay. I tried to make friends, but it was an international site, so most of the kids spoke Mandarin, alternative French, the secret script, fire tongue. You know, <laughs> the usual. Soon enough, my dumbass thought all the other kids would get a kick out of my regeneration powers. They didn't like it. But somebody yeah. thought it was cool. It was one of the pet octopi from the kids' aquarium. What? Turns out these octopi were psychic, so it didn't matter what language I spoke. I called him Gilbert. He was bullied a lot by his siblings because he couldn't change his colors. They snuck up on him and kept eating his food during feeding time. Gilbert always Rude. used to tell me that he wished he had my regeneration powers because of how useful that must be to fight against the winged menace. I don't know what he meant by that, but it made me feel pretty important. So the I always menace? made sure to keep him well fed whenever his brothers and sisters would go to sleep. He also told me that one day, he and his family would finally travel back to the ocean. Somehow. He said it was beautiful, and promised that one day I would see it too. On one occasion, I was given permission to visit Gilbert's main tank in the aquatic center. They took him and all the other octopi there for most of the week. Mm -hmm. I was pretty excited to see Gilbert's mother. Octopus don't use names, so he just referred to her as the Big Gilbert. <laughs> was the Big Gilbert as sweet as the Little Gilbert? Probably not. <laughs> Connor? <laughs> Maybe it was psychic energy or childish fear, but I ran out of that room as fast as I could. Yeah. Somehow I knew the mother didn't want me near her or her children, so I never came back. 
I guess Gilbert wasn't allowed to visit the child care center either. They just put stupid mermaids in the aquarium instead. It wasn't the same. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure he's fine. I always used to tell Gilbert that he should ditch his family the second he got out. Of the nine octopus that escaped Site 63 that year, eight washed up on the shores of Greece after an awkward battle with an army of crows. I have a photo up in my room that the aquatic center sent me. And Gilbert was right. The ocean is beautiful. Even with the dead giant octopus in the middle. But it makes me happier knowing that he's out there, living life, getting mad octopusy. Lovely. Interesting. So, if he's still out there, does this mean he lived past the average octopus lifespan? Um, I, I don't know. Do they live long? <laughs> oh, dude, they live forever. Oh, thank God. A year. This is the most I've ever shared with a therapist. No, You're there you so go. You're so good at being not overbearing and unpleasant, Miss Powers. Oh, gosh, please. Call me Natalie. Well, you may continue to call me by my first name. I thought Connor was your surname. It's interchangeable. Oh my gosh. What? I feel like I can tell you anything. I, I wish we could just keep talking after this session. I don't care what about. I just really like you to talk with. Maybe we can go on a date sometime. We can talk about whatever we want on a date and awkward pauses are normal because we're eating. Date? Aww. Does that mean we get to hold hands? Aww. It appears I am free from the night terror dimension. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Natalie. The sheer amount of sexual tension from your untouched virgins shattered the boundaries of reality and now I can walk amongst the living yet again. Yes! By the way, sessions next Thursday, Connor. Remember to bring your dream journal. That is... <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> this was outstanding. Much applause to this one. Much applause to this one. So I, I saw down in the description he says he he tried to make a sweet one, hopes he didn't fail. That was absolutely awesome. Much applause. Lord Bung did a great job with this. It's always it's always fun for me to see when people take something very serious and make it funny. That's why text to speech was so great, because um, it took the most, took the most serious one of the most serious universes and made it comical. So kudos to this. Next, we got the Infinite IKEA. This uh, this belongs between episode two and three. Um, but I'm going to leave it in the, like, as far as when I put things in the playlist, I'm going to leave it in the original order that he released them in. Um, I think that's important. In any case, guys, that was Only Us by Lord Bung. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I did. Um, all of Lord Bung's description, um, uh, all of Lord Bung's links are going to be in the description down below. For some reason, my brain is just not, is not doing good. Um, apparently... Jim O'Don is plays uh, Doctor Powers, and yeah, and Gilbert's song was done by Ivory Ramis. So, guys, just check the description for those links down below. I will see you guys next time, and next time on for confinement, we're going to be checking out the Infinite IKEA Part One. The Infinite IKEA is literally one of my favorite SCPs. I I I, I can't even I can't even. Uh, my links are going to be in the description down below as well, including Discord, Patreon, everything else like that. I will catch you guys next time. I cannot wait for the infinite Ikea. <laughs> <laughs>